Hello my Sock Universe! It has been quite a while since I last did a long form Premier League video. Fortunately I'm regularly recording um, short videos so uh, you can always see my thoughts on what's happening currently in the Premier League. Sometimes I do even two per week uh, because uh, it's quite exciting what's happening. I have to say the Premier League this season is probably the league that is the most exciting one thanks to a three-way, yes, a three-way title race. It's absolutely amazing. I cannot remember that we had one in a long time and this makes it this makes the Premier League almost a must watch. But it's not only the three-way title race that is quite quite exciting. It's also the uh, chase for the European spots although the Premier League might, will most likely get a fifth spot so the top four race is a top five race and then when we look at top five it's a relatively clear-cut decision. However, uh, then for the other European spots, there are a few uh, big-name teams in there that are kind of so-and-so performing that are also not that great. So those are two major talking points that we already I want to address in this video. And when we get to it, I will just put the results since the last time we talked in, just to give you a little bit to uh, look at. And also, you know, we'll look at the current standings and all that kind of stuff. But there are two more things that I definitely want to talk about. The relegation battle, including PSR rulings, profit and sustainability rules, or you know the, uh, the, the fair play rules, kind of financial fair play rules that uh, the Premier League has, where we saw already two teams deducted points, uh, some teams got points back, and uh, uh, you know it's all about Everton. Everton might get another points deduction there. Uh, and with all the appeals processes going on, this might well drag into the summer, so well past the end of the season. And it, we could very well find us in, in a situation where we don't know who is getting relegated, which is not an ideal situation uh, to say the least. I'm sure there will be a solution found there as well. So that's another major talking point that I want to address. And uh, the last one are, of course, the cup competitions. However, the one that I'm, I don't want to say most excited, but that actually got me a little bit excited is what happened at Crystal Palace. There is an Austrian coach at uh, Crystal Palace with Oliver Glasner, and in case you don't know, I mean, he's probably known in England for dragging Wolfsburg into the Champions League, for getting Frankfurt, the, uh, winning the uh, Europa League with Frankfurt. However, for me, he will always be the coach that got Lusk not only back from the second league into the top league in his four years that, uh, that he worked at Lusk, but really made them a top team. And uh, his leg legacy is still looming large at Lusk. I think he's an excellent, excellent coach. One that I actually feel will be undervalued at Crystal Palace because he's definitely one that wants to push forward and I'm definitely going to follow his progress. But I would say we'll start with the Cups and I want to start with the League Cup because the last time we had kind of the semi first set of semifinals, I mean, the semifinals in the League Cup went about as you would, you would expect. Chelsea made a big turnaround against Middlesbrough, uh, Liverpool saw it against Fulham, so it was Chelsea against Liverpool in the final at the end of February, so there's a little bit more than a uh, month ago. And what a final it was. I mean, first of Liverpool had so many injuries at that time that they more or less played the kids. And in the final, the main storyline became how did Chelsea not win, win this one? I mean, Chelsea were pushing at the end of regulation to find the winner. And then suddenly in overtime, I think Liverpool uh, first was, was slightly better if memory serves us. I mean, it's all a blur at this time. Uh, but I, if memory serves me right, Liverpool had their chances, especially early, but then Chelsea were pushing. But then when overtime started, suddenly it was again more Liverpool than Chelsea, and Chelsea were holding off for penalties. And they didn't even make it to penalties because Van Dijk scores a very late winner after a goal of his was already denied in regulation. Uh, Klopp definitely said that this is emotionally his biggest uh, trophy win, although it's probably the smallest trophy that he has won. But just the fact that he had to play the kids and uh, they stepped up is probably a big thing. But it also has, has to be said, I mean, uh, Chelsea should have won that one. Did not go as well for Liverpool in the FA Cup. Yes, they reached the quarter, quarterfinals. I mean, had a very a good draw. But uh, the FA Cup this year, 
Let's be frank, there were not that many great stories. Yeah, Maidstone United, but then they got transferred by Coventry City because they went away to Coventry City and the draw did not work in their favor. Yes, beating Ipswich away from home was a big deal there. Uh, other than that, the upsets most of the time were missing. You know, uh, when we look at the round 16, uh, we had Newcastle needing penalties against Blackburn Rose. We had City easy over Luton. Uh, Chelsea beating Leeds United, although Leeds United gave them a real scare. Uh, we had Manchester United making it past a for a Forest, also not looking great. Wolves over Brighton. Uh, and Liverpool an easy one over Southampton. The quarterfinals, though, stepped it a little a little bit up when we started out with a big surprise with Cove Coventry City winning at Wolves scoring a very late goal I mean Wolves seemingly had turned around in a stoppage time Coventry turning around again uh, City of course over Newcastle Chelsea also another scare I mean Chelsea Chelsea eliminated all the good teams in the championship although less is a little bit on downward trend there but they need two late goals to beat Leicester City, uh, so that was not easy. And then an epic, epic United against Liverpool account was always going to be the biggest one. This time, actually, it lived up to the billing, where United actually started out well, got the lead, though Liverpool turned around just before the half and seemed cruising. However, they do not convert the few chances that they're having, and see United find a late equalizer in overtime. The Liverpool retake the lead, and still United uh, find a winner. And I think the last, the last one was even uh, at the very end of overtime. This was an amazing game, probably one of the best games of the season, and probably one of the few highlights. The draw for the semi final, which are happening at the end of uh, this month now, uh, see City face Chelsea. Chelsea kind of a little bit of a cup team at this moment and probably they need this to get back in, into Europe. I still will see City will win this one and Coventry will host United. The way that United are trending at the moment, you would think that Coventry have a chance. Uh, interestingly, if Coventry would make the final, I think the playoff final for the championship is scheduled the day after or two days after uh, the FA Cup final, so that might cause some scheduling issues as well. So watch that, that, that the spot if Coventry really should make it. I think it will be a Manchester final again. This leads us now to the Premier League and let's first talk this really, really, really exciting tie title race. Uh, we had in the time since we talked all three contenders meeting each other with Arsenal holding slightly high margin. If you look at head to head, uh, Arsenal won both their home games. Um, we had both of the others only drawing at home. But, you know, I think if everything goes right, I think Liverpool actually win the two home games as well and might be in a better shape. I actually have to say, if I look at the current uh, race, yes, Arsenal at times looked imperious, but they also had the blip at the beginning of the year. Uh, City, you always feel there's a lot of potential there, but I don't think they are really living up to their potential at the, uh, at the moment. Whereas for Liverpool, my feeling is that it's more the points that they should have had. I mean, that was the big one uh, where they were robbed against Spurs. Then uh, I think Arsenal at home, that's a game they probably should have won. And also the big one game against Manchester City that we'll get to, they also should have won. However, first off, let's talk. Arsenal uh, were hosting Liverpool on 4th of February and were largely outplaying Liverpool. Yes, at times it was really, really a tight, tight match, but in the end Arsenal were very good for that 3-1 win, which poor pooped a big stamp. And uh, up until that point, you know, the story was kind of, can Arsenal get back in the title race? They were a little bit off the, off the pace because they had this bad run. After their break that they had, where they went away, they suddenly found their goal scoring form. Scoring freely, I mean, goals are galore everywhere and um, they really put like a big stamp on uh, their renewed title challenge which is 3-1 over Liverpool after having lost at home to them in the FA Cup earlier. The next big one was then at the beginning of March where Liverpool hosted Manchester City. Manchester City coming back from a win in the Manchester Derby 3-1 uh, and that was a game was really really good but uh, it was uh, City took took lead through a well worked corner. However, Liverpool then find 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 equalizer early on, and they should have 
scored the winner. I mean, there were the chances there. There should have been a penalty for them. Uh, it was actually amazing how much Liverpool uh, really uh, rattled City and City did not look like the team that they should be and um, I think Liverpool were very good for that win and then we had on the past weekend and this was actually the previous two were really really good games but going into this uh, big clash on the weekend between City and Arsenal so this is the last time that the uh, top three um, uh, was a duel between the top 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 three it was that uh, Arsenal and Liverpool were level on points with City a point behind. Liverpool had actually won already before that, so they were retaking the lead in the league. And it was clear, whoever wins the game between City and Arsenal will again be in the, in, in the lead. But it also felt like that Arsenal potentially could live a little bit more with the draw, especially going to City where they have been losing badly over the last few years. And Arsenal came only out to defend. City could not break them down. I found that Arsenal were bending but never breaking. I mean, the biggest chance was Ake had a early on in the uh, first half. But other than that, not many big chances and also not many big chances for Arsenal. It was actually a really, really dull game as was the first meeting between those two. So I really don't want to see more of these, although we might get this in the Champions League. Even, you know, uh, both could meet in a semi-final as far as I remember. So uh, better not this, this, this one because uh, although these teams can be really exciting, that was not exciting. But it also has to be said in both cases, um, it was not a must win, it was more like a must lose. However, with this result, it actually plays perfectly into Liverpool's hand because now Liverpool sit uh, three points clear of City, two points clear of Arsenal. Yes, they really cannot afford dropping points because of goal difference, but they might actually, it's only six goals difference, so this could be worked. But the schedule for Liverpool pans out quite nicely. I mean, you have Spurs, you have Villa in there, but I actually think they can do this. And I have not mentioned the big elephant, of course, in the, in, in, in the room. Is, um, it's almost old news now. Jurgen Klopp is leaving Liverpool at the end of the season. He announced that. And so there is... It is in the cards. I actually have a feeling that City will not win this title. They, uh, I mean, all of these teams are kind, kind of low, but I think Liverpool going through this wave of injuries that they had, they look almost the best, although Arsenal probably played the most exciting cutout what was happening uh, at uh, last weekend. But let's see where this will go. Also, all three are still very much alive in European competitions, so uh, that might also play into this title race. So there's a whole lot, lot, lot on the title race. Let's talk quickly European spots. As I said already, the Premier League are very well on place to get five Champions League spots. So while it's tied between Villa and Spurs with 59 and 56 at the moment, Spurs having a game in hand. Actually Spurs going to Villa and winning big and then throwing it away on the uh, following weekend again. These teams are, I think they're good to watch. I think Villa has plateaued now. I think they, they have no more, more to go and Spurs can be the most exciting team in the league one day and on the other day it's kind of yeah mm, i don't know where it's going with, uh, with, with 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 them but i think that those two teams will make four and five i think united are too inconsistent i mean united with a zero goal difference uh that says as all i mean they they should have lost at brentford this past weekend uh west ham also uh you know very much up, up, up and down. I mean, there were two big losses. The one, the 6 0 loss uh, at home to Arsenal, which was more or less capitulation, but also what happened on the past weekend when they had a 3 1 lead at Newcastle. And Newcastle Limits also not finding its pace. Uh, and then they win it for three, uh, they lose it for three. So, um, so and so, and Brighton is also not quite hitting it, but you know, with all the players they have lost, I mean, uh, uh, the Zerbi cannot work as much magic. Uh, we have to briefly talk about Chelsea Ch Ch as well, who sometimes you see some sh green shoots, and then other times, like on the past weekend, where they have a man more against Burnley, they even go down and not winning it doesn't look good for them as well. For me, uh, they are probably. Uh, one of the stunners this season. Uh, 
Also when I mention Wolves, they have they also have a weird form. They have some really bad losses, but then they have also some big wins like at uh, Chelsea or at Spurs and 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 so on, which uh, shows you that there's actually a good team there, but also consistency is lacking. So there's this big mid-table region, which leads us now straight into the relegation battle, uh, where it would be so easy if it wasn't for the points deduction. I think Luton at a point it seemed like they might survive and then they had a 3-0 lead at Bournemouth and threw that away losing 4-3 and I think since then Luton is never really the same uh, and of the three promoted teams no one would have expected Luton to be probably the best of them but Luton at the moment seemed like a team that is just not good enough although it's the best of the three I have to say the only thing that keeps Luton afloat are the points deductions Everton so point deduction of initially uh, minus 10 was now reduced to minus 6 points uh, through PSR breaches and probably this week there will come another one and Forrest was also hit with a 4 points deduction. You know, these points deduction I cannot really say, I, from what I hear it kind of makes a little bit sense, although Forrest, uh, the breach was a little bit harsh, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more than for Everton on the other side, the way people worked with the Premier League and, and so maybe that played in, in, into it. It seems a little bit random at a certain stage. So uh, there you go. And maybe there's some mitigated getting five hackers in both cases. In any case, there will be another punishment for Everton, which might drag them into it. Uh, if we look at the table, I mean, Crystal Palace at 30 seems to be kind of safe. Bournemouth is 30, so I think they are Crystal Palace 30, probably safe. Brentford, although dropping, I still think they're relatively safe. But Everton at 25 with another points deduction coming, they're now three points off the drop. Forest also 22, Luton 20, uh, 22. So it's really, really tight. Sheffield United, I think, are gone, and I think Burnley also. Uh, but it might be that despite the points deductions, Everton and Nottingham Forest might just about survive this league. That's it from me for now. Uh, I'm really looking for it. I mean, the most exciting is, of course, the title titleries, but there are some really good teams, other than like Spurs and Villa, that I really enjoy while watching West Ham are still uh, alive in Europe. Um, so there's quite some stuff to be excited about. Uh, and this is not coming from easy from the lips of this Serie A fan, but at this very moment, uh, there's no denying that the Premier League is the best league. They have almost every match that you watch uh, has tons of goals. There's loads of action. There are great moves in there, there as well. So there's loads of e excitement and that makes it for great watching. I will keep you updated now, uh, we, of course, weekly with at least one short video, if not two, depending on how things go. Uh, I might make more regular videos. Let's shoot one a month of what was happening. Let's see how it will go and how my schedule works out. Uh, but, you know, it is exciting. If something big happens, we definitely have to talk about it also in the long form because the short form is sometimes just not enough. In any case, I really hope you enjoyed this little bit more long form review uh, from what has been happening over the past two and a half months. A little bit ashamed of saying this, but yeah, it is what about, about, about this. Uh, if you did, please give a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll talk to you more about things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.